Dawson Ryder with you. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here, and it is time for my holiday buyer's guide yet again for 2020. So this, as usual, is going to primarily consist of PR Sentai Rider type stuff, but also other things that I cover and other interests just for fun, and I've done this every year for a few years now. But So let's go ahead and dive right in with Power Rangers. I have my little cheat sheet there, so that's what I'm looking down at right there, So just so I don't forget anything. But So Power Rangers, I actually had quite a few things, quite a few fun picks, and I also want to say right at the beginning, there's a couple weird picks on here where, since this isn't like a best of the year thing which I'll do later there's some that I'm not like oh my god this is a must own but I think I could recommend it if you're interested in it you'll see what I mean when I get to it this is a weird intro anyway Power Rangers so first up is the triple dino team up figure pack I thought this was a fun and cool release that they did to coincide with the triple dino team up even though I didn't end up being that over the moon about it I think it was cool that they had merch involving it there's also the t-rex which I think if you're into that you could get but I more so recommend the figures you know they're not perfect especially pink is missing some details but I still think they're overall three solid figures and a fun pack. I think red in particular was really solid with its more accurate head sculpt than the lightning collection. Then just for fun, the lion spinning sword from Beast Morphers. Uh, I think especially for kids, I think they'll get a kick out of this. I got a kick out of it. You know, it's not my favorite weapon in the show, but just the fun spinning gimmick I found to be, well, a lot of fun. So I think that if you're like a kid at heart like me, or you have a kid you want to get it for, I thought it was a fun pick for the, it's like it's really basic, like all it does is basically just spin, but I thought it was fun, so I included it on the list. Not sponsored by Spin Master. Next up is actually the Hasbro MMPR Megazord, and this was the budget one that came in individual packs, which is how I got it, and it also comes in like a multi-pack, which you can buy online. I haven't seen that one in person yet. And this one I think is a little bit underrated. Like the details aren't that great, um, and the, I'm really selling it here aren't I? But the details aren't that great and the helmet's a little bit small but for the most part it's actually not bad. I kind of dug it and especially since a lot of the MMPR Megazords much like certain things like the Morphers become more expensive over time. I mean I know from personal experience it took me a while to hunt down the original Megazord before they came out with the legacy ones for my collection and so since that is a thing this is a nice easy way to get a decently solid MMPR Megazord that I think looks pretty good when it's combined. You can paint it if you want. I think again kids will like it so I think it's kind of an under rated neat pick if you either want something really cheap for an MMPR Dino Megazord alternative or just impatient and you want something in the meantime. Now this is going to be just kind of a blanket lightning collection recommendation, you know, not a lightning collection shill, but I think, you know, there's some nitpicks and problems with it, but for the most part I think it's been a great year, great two years for the lightning collection with lots of holiday picks. I mean I think last year I said just the lightning collection figures and that kind of recommendation stands. I don't necessarily have, I mean I do have some favorites, but because everyone's going to have different rangers they want. Just kind of a blanket recommendation for the figures. I mean, right back here I have Green and Draken, which is like a good representation of, hey, we got something cool obscure from the comics, and then like classic MMPR stuff. So there's actually been a very decent variety from MMPR stuff to more obscure fan favorites like A-Squad to the big monsters. So I think, you know, if you want to find something for yourself or a friend that's into this type of stuff, there's actually a decently wide net within two years of pretty good figures to pick from. And then on the other hand, there's also been some other cool releases, like the Lightning Collection Dragon Dagger. It wasn't perfect, but it's still pretty cool, and if you missed the Legacy one or the original one, it's decently looking like the prop in the show. Uh, it's got good sounds. I still wish it played the Dragon or the Green Ranger theme, but you can actually play it, which is one thing I thought was cool in the Legacy version. Like, in addition to being able to just activate the generic song, you can actually play those songs or your own songs, and it's pretty cool. Also, the helmets. I mean, I think only Reds came out this year. I can't remember if White came out this year or last year. I think it was last year, but Reds came out this year and I wasn't that enthused about it because I already had the Legacy one, but once I got it, I was actually pretty into it because it looks pretty cool. And I think if you have been someone that's wanting a helmet either for cosplay or like, for me, years I just wanted one for on the shelf and I didn't want to pay expensive prop money uh, on eBay or from like the prop sellers or whatever, um, they're actually pretty cool looking, especially like I said, Reds took me by surprise. And then you also have the Lightning Morpher, which I think is pretty underrated. I think this thing got a lot of unnecessary heat. Again, like the Dragon Dagger, it wasn't perfect, but it's pretty freaking cool. It looks pretty good, it comes with a cool stand, the sounds are pretty decent, and much like with the Megazord, like I mentioned, this can be something that's hard to find for people. Again, before the Legacy one came out, it took me some time to hunt down the original one for my collection, and it could be pretty pricey, and now the Legacy one is pretty pricey. So if you were unable to find both of those and are still struggling, 
struggling to find them. This is a really cool option, and again, not perfect, not beyond criticism, but I think people were way too harsh on this pretty cool first release for a Morpher and the Lightning collection. Now for Sentai, this is where it gets a little bit weird because like none of these picks in the Kara Major line, I've been like, oh my god, this is an absolute must-have. But I think if you're a Kara Major fan and you want something from the show, you'll be happy with it. So, I mean, my number one mecha pick would probably be Grateful Phoenix because I thought it was a cool toy and it looked good, but I think if you're a Kara Major fan and you enjoy the mecha and want something from it, you'd probably be mostly happy with any of them on the list. Same thing with the Changers. I like both Changers just fine. They're not my top tier Changers, but I like the show so much that I'm really glad to have it in my collection. So if you're a Kara Major fan and you want one of the Changers or want, again, a Changer for somebody else, I think they'll be happy with it. My other pick for Sentai is a little bit, you know, on the pricier range, but is the Memorial Edition Ryu Soul Ken, which is basically like the complete selection Sentai version. It's a more show accurate size one. You get a bunch of different phrases from the show. So it's like, again, it's pricier, but if you're a really big fan of Ryu Soldier or just the weapon or you're hyped for Dino Fury and you have some cash you want to spend on this either for yourself or for others, it was one of the more cool Sentai toys that I had this year. Now, Rider is even weirder because I only really have two recommendations because I haven't had too many Rider items this year that I've been that excited about. But I'll go ahead and recommend the Sword Driver if you're into Saber or just excited about a new driver. Uh, I actually just kind of enjoyed getting the toy more than I am enjoying the show. So I think it's a pretty decently fun toy and I can recommend it if you're into it. And the other one is something actually I have a review of and it hasn't gone up on the channel yet, but is the Complete Selection Modification Kiva Belt. Um, again, a little on the pricier side and I'm a huge Kiva fan personally so I was really happy with it. And if you, you know, like Complete Selections, you know how like robust they are with features. Almost too robust. So I think if you're like me um, and you like Kiva, then you'll be happy with it. A spoiler alert for the review. I mean, I guess that goes for almost any of the complete selection ones to some degree. Now, as far as my other category of non toka related things, as far as stuff that I've covered, um, Ben 10 wise, I think the past couple years I've just recommended the figures because as I've said in previous years, the figures in general are just of good quality and similar to the Lightning Collection. If you're a fan of a particular character or alien, you'll be happy with it. They did come out with a recent wave of the sort of recent season Omni Kicks and movie stuff. So I could definitely recommend those if you were into any of those because even though the lesser ones are still pretty good quality. And also the buildable Omnitrix and Antitrix set, I still think it could have been a little bit better, but I think kids will really like it. It's a lot of fun for that. And if you like really want an Antitrix for your collection, it makes a pretty decent looking one. And it's still kind of a neat release. And then just for a couple Star Wars-y things, there was the animatronic Baby Yoda, which I did cover on the channel, which is honestly kind of the perfect Baby Yoda toy for me in terms of like what I wanted for my collection after seeing The Mandalorian the first time last year. It's got like really nice, fun animatronic features and like expressions without having to buy like one of the crazy expensive ones I've seen online. And like in, in a way, you know, I still can't believe how far technology has come for like toys to have something like that. And it was really fun and I really dug it. And then also the Dark Saber, um, which I just recently saw a headline that it made like some, I don't remember what side it was, but like some lists worst toys of the season, which really surprised me because it's not perfect. It's not a black series Force FX. It's just meant to be like the kid toy line version. But that's why I liked it was because I was impressed. I, I assumed it was going to be kind of eh, whatever until we get an eventual black series one. And so for what it was, I was surprised how cool it is. Like for me, it looks good where it's on display. The lights look really good, especially especially when the, light, the lights are off. You know, the lights of the thing look good when the lights of the world are off. But you know what I mean. Like, for what it is, I thought it was pretty cool. Again, I think kids will get a kick out of it, but if you're someone like me that is, like, impatient for a Black Series release, or you just know you're not going to be able to afford the Black Series release, this is honestly pretty cool. Like, I was surprised to see it on that worst of list, because I definitely wouldn't call it worst. Like, mid-range at worst. But then we have comics. Of course, we had a lot of Power Rangers comics this year. You know, the I think the Necessary Evil arc was cool. It's kind of hard to recommend for, like, Holiday Buyer's Guide buying a whole arc. But we did just start issue one of Mighty Morphin and the Power Rangers series, so that's, like, a fresh start. So if you wanted to get somebody into the comics, that's a good place to start. And then I do have two graphic novel recommendations. One is the only standalone one that came out this year, but it's Sins of the Future, which I loved a ton. And if my timeline uploading plans go correctly, this will, will have come out right after the Sins of the Future review, so check that out, self-plug. But I really dug it a lot. I think if you're a Power Rangers and a Time Force fan especially, it's worth checking out. And also the compendium of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers TMNT crossover, which is another thing that took me by surprise this year, because I wasn't really looking for 
forward to it all that much and it wound up being a very enjoyable crossover event with some really fun character stuff and interactions and like crossover designs between the two franchises so I think if you're a fan remotely of either of them it's actually way more worth a check out than I thought and just for one non non-PR recommendation, they did compile all four issues of the Rise of Kylo Ren comic that came out. I don't, I think, it, I mean, Kylo Ren came out last year and into this year, I think, but I think the Compendium came out this year. Uh, but it was a really cool comic by Charles Soule, who does the, um, he did the Vader comics, and so it gives some really cool backstory into Kylo Ren, and differentiates him a little bit from Anakin. Now then, just for Quick few video game picks. Animal Crossing. The Animal Crossing came out for Switch. The most boring fun you'll ever have is how I always describe Animal Crossing, and that's always a fun game to keep yourself occupied. Then Spider-Man Miles Morales also came out this year for PS4 and 5. I love the Spider-Man games, and this one's been really awesome. Also, more Star Wars. They came out with a Squadrons game, which is like a piloting game. I'm not usually too into that, but I really dig that game. And I think if you're looking for something a little bit different in terms of, you know, Star Wars games as being a pilot game, I thought it was pretty fun. Now, just for some really quick, like, movies, TV purchasing recommendations, um, Birds of Prey, the DC movie that came out this year, it was actually, I think it was the last movie I saw in theaters, too. I thought this was, like, underrated. I think it went not only under the radar, but then I got a lot of heat for being a social justice movie, which I personally didn't get that. I thought it was a pretty kick-ass and unique movie, so I wanted to recommend it. Also, the Sonic the Hedgehog movie was surprisingly enjoyable. Also, um, one of the last movies that came out before theaters were, you know, in sort of half shut down, shut down, not shut down, whatever. Um, but it was a really enjoyable movie, so I think if you're a fan of Sonic, even remotely, I think you'll get a kick out of it. And also, just a random pick, since you know me from this channel, The Office is finally coming out with a complete series on Blu-ray, which I am surprised it took them this long to do a Blu-ray of it. Like, there's a lot of series where they're like, mid-range popular and all they ever have is a DVD set for like years. But The Office is like so popular, I can't believe it took them this long to get a full-on Blu-ray set. Like I know we're heading towards like 4K and streaming more, but still, couple it, son. So also, the Psych 2 movie came out, so go watch that. But that is it for my Holiday Buyer's Guide this year, guys. If you guys have any other picks or recommendations for people, leave them in the comments, and I'll only delete them if I don't like them. I'm just kidding. But so leave them in the comments, you know. There might have been some other cool stuff that either I forgot or maybe I didn't, you know, experience and you guys can recommend to people. But until next time, guys, have a good holiday. You know, there'll obviously be videos coming out for the rest of the year and, of course, my best of the year as well. But until next time, forget, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell so you can just for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing.